It's a great joy and a privilege to be in the presence of God and also with God's people. It's uh, always a privilege to minister to the different groups of people in different parts of our world. And once again, it's my joy to be in Kuwait for the third time and to meet all of you. And especially I extend my gratitude and thanks to our Pastor Gerald. A couple of days back we had a wonderful time together since he was a missionary in South Africa and also I am in the same line almost for my past 51 years because I am 51 years old, my parents are also missionaries, so I consider my life in the missions for 51 years now. So we had a lot of common elements to talk together and uh, we praise God for making these days available to be with you. And uh, I would like to just give a little more information before I go into God's Word. The organization where I work is an organization committed totally for God's Word. So we will not much time spent to promote our mission, but always we strongly believe that if we promote God's Word, the God's work will move forward. So that's our basics. As you have seen, Indian Evangelical Mission is now 54 years old. I am the sixth general secretary, and our founder, around Dr. Theodore Williams, is a well-known speaker, and also God used him in the Back to the Bible, and he was giving leadership even in the World Evangelical Alliance as a president for many years. When the foreign missionaries left India in the year 1941, the challenge came upon the Indians to take the gospel to the people who never heard. And during the time only, it was in the year 1952, the vacation Bible school movement started in India. At the end of every day in the VBS, there is a portion for us to talk about the missionary's biography. And after a few years, three friends joined together, started to discuss, now no more missionaries enterprise in India. We are talking about missionaries and what can we do something for the furtherance of the gospel. And during that time, four friends joined together. They formed a small missionary movement called Friends Missionary Prayer Band, which was just a prayer movement. Then in the year 1965, the Lord led our founder to start this missionary movement. Our basic commitment is to take the gospel to every person and to plant churches among every people group. Our conviction is where there is no church, but in partnering with the church, we'll go over there. We strongly believe that church is an agent of God's mission. The church should always engage in the mission of God because the recent crisis given the commission not to an individual but to the body of Christ that our greatest agenda of our church is taking the gospel of Christ to the other places. So if you take the resources, where do you get the missionaries? All our 930 missionaries are coming from different churches. I come from the Anglican church background. We call it as the Church of South India. And where do we get our finance? We get all of our finance from the churches, individuals, and the families from the churches. We praise God for that. And then where do we get the prayer support? That also from all of our dear ones. And we are committed not only to work in India, but also wanted to see Indians going outside India to serve God. So right from the inception, we started to send our missionaries to other countries, like to Papua New Guinea in partnering with the pioneers, then to Thailand, to other places, Philippines, in partnering with OMF, Overseas Missionary Prayer Fellowship. And we had some friends working in Gulf countries in partnering with the InterSurf. And last year, we could send a couple to Ghana and to work to the SIM. And Lord willing, this year, two couples will be going to other two countries like Malawi as well as to Cambodia. And how do these friends are supported? Not by the Indians within India, because we cannot send the money, but we encourage the Christian friends in other countries to support the work of the Lord. The ultimate is to extend God's kingdom. The Lord who said, I will build my church, we have to engage in the mission of God. So that's what we are doing as well as we are engaged in translating God's word in 59 different languages. India has got more than 1,562 languages, and we have the New Testament only in 68 languages, the whole Bible in 87 languages. We have the privilege of dedicating in the month of March two New Testaments after working almost for 20 years. 
Lord willing, this year, in another four languages, we'll be completing the New Testament. So we are trying to do something in the work of the Lord. So we need your prayers, your partnership, and we always promote or motivate the churches to understand and realize their responsibility in terms of world evangelization. That's why we put everything in the books. It is basically the Bible study books, which is focused on missions. And when you go out, you can take our magazine, which comes every month. It has got a lot of Bible study tools and also small booklets. It is a study on Haggai. And when you go out, you can see it. And uh, there, is a, uh, there are a lot of uh, Bible studies put in a flash that also you can buy it and use it during your travel time. So this is something briefly about the ministry, what we are engaged. And a pastor was asking me, these are the days we are working on the missions. Day before yesterday it was on Great Commission and today it is on outreach. And I didn't see all the outlines of what you are working on. After hearing from our pastor, I was praying Lord, you give me a guidance how I can put a systematic study which will make me to enjoy so that the people also will be blessed and benefited. So for the past two days in different places in the Lighthouse Church, I was sharing God's word and this is the last sharing. And the title what you are given is The Mission According to Christ. So this is the title and the five studies I had it. The first one was the profile on missions and it was talking about the outline for missions. Secondly, I was talking about the programs, what are the different activities involved in terms of the mission is concerned. The third one was the partners in missions, who are the people engaged. The fourth one I just shared over there, the power for mission. It is talking about the Holy Spirit. Finally, today I'll be talking about the force is the prayer for mission. So this is the last study. I'm doing it. And let me give you a brief introduction or summary of what I shared so that you also will not miss anything. The first study on profile, I took all the passages, especially after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, how he was intentional counting the body of Christ, the people who accepted Christ as the Lord to take up this mandate and to move forward. So from Luke chapter 24, we are trying to understand the first one I was talking about the what is the message for the missions it is talking about the repentance and the forgiveness through the suffering and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ the second one was about the could you please go to the the second one is about the mandate what is the mandate the Lord has given to us it is to take the gospel to all the nations that means Nations means all the people groups. The third one is, what is the message? What, what is the method? It is the human witness. The people who are forgiven by God should take the gospel of Christ. What is the means? It is with the Holy Spirit. That's the way we can move forward. I think your church has a lot of things to do in terms of mission. When you was looking into the uh, symbol of your church, I saw it, your Bible base. Jesus focused, spirit led, is it? Okay, anyhow, I also became the member of your church now. Okay, if I apply for the membership, I think, Pastor, you will not have second thought to give to me. Thank you. So when you say that you are the spirit led, Bible based, Christ focused, I think you are more, more accountable than any other congregations who are worshiping here, I suppose. You are cursed. You are very focused, clear. You made a commitment when you filled your forms. It is my prayer, Lord, this church should not only support missionaries, it should send missionaries. That's my prayer. That's my desire of this day. Okay, let's go to the next one. What are the programs? And I picked up the passage from Acts when Paul was standing before the king Agrippa he was giving the summary of the things what all happened. First, he talked about the faith, the formation, how the Lord opened the ears of the people when the gospel had gone into them. And secondly, it talks about how the freedom came, how people are able to be free from the powers of the Satan and all sorts of bondages. 
Thirdly, there is a forgiveness. Because of Jesus Christ, there was a restoration of the relationship. People could get it. And fourthly, there was a fellowship. Because all the barriers are broken. All become one in the name of Christ. Many in number, but in the name of Christ. Then finally, there was a count always engaging in work of the Lord because there is a special calling given to everybody. So it is taking the gospel and that is the continuity. And then I picked up the another narrative that is the third one is talking about who are the partners. John chapter 20. When Jesus came into the closed room, the disciples who walked with Jesus enjoyed all the blessing, seen the miracles, Who's supposed to take the mandate of Christ? Now with the fear, lost everything with discouragement, with a defeated mindset, disturbed heart. They were all there. But the Lord wanted to use those people only. So he appeared to them and said, peace be unto you. And wanted to see these people become the partners, the broken ones, the neglected, the backslidden to be the partners in the gospel. So four things we try to understand. The first is said, he gave them the new point when he said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Then he gave that new anointing. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you want to do the work of the Lord, you need the work of the Spirit of God. Then thirdly, he gave a new approval. What is that? If you forgive the sins of others, it will be forgiven. It is not the authority, but God gave them a place where they can be the channel of blessing. So if you say that I am a forgiven sinner, there is a mission for each and every one of you. Then fourthly, there is a new assurance where Thomas is coming to your point to say that, Sovereign Lord, you are my God, you are my Lord. You are my Lord, you are my God. So with that, all these people, so you see what happened to all the disciples, all became the martyrs of Christ. That's a wonderful thing. So, these are the partners. So when you look into that, we too can become the partners. And just before coming over here, I was talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, power for missions. I was looking from five different angles. Okay, I was talking a little bit about the, what is lived by the Spirit, led by the Spirit next, and what is walked by the Spirit. So then I said to be the witnesses picked up from Acts chapter 1, you will be my witnesses when you receive the Holy Spirit. So we talked about the ministry of the Holy Spirit to empower us in five different areas of our lives. Number one, we need the Spirit of God for our personal life, where Peter and John got the boldness to be his witnesses. Secondly, we need the Holy Spirit for our family life. Ananias and Sabira, where they are supposed to keep God in the center in their life, but they failed. But there, once again, the family is an agent of God's mission where we should keep God's purpose in the center of our lives, not all of our desires or our dreams. The third one is in our daily life. Acts chapter 6, decision making every day where we need the filling of the Holy Spirit. Filling of the Holy Spirit, nothing else. Allowing our life to be controlled by Him and to be influenced by the Holy Spirit, so that we will be sensitive that the Spirit who is in us is always is ministering because He is our counselor in our time of need. And the fourth area is now public life. When Stephen was in the public, he was able to make his statement very clear. At the same time, when people are garnishing, he didn't lose his temper, reacted to the situation. He was able to maintain his testimony. Because of that, Paul became the servant of God. Then finally I talked about the spirit for the church too. The church at Antioch, when God called the topest two people, Paul and Barnabas, they're able to release them for the work of the Lord. It is my prayer that this lighthouse will start to release the best one for the work of the Lord. If you put a list, number one, these are the skilled, willful, all this one. If you put the list, the Lord says, I want to take this first topmost 20 people who are good worshippers, good singers, good firebrand preachers for the work of the Lord. 
how a heartbeat will be. I was also playing keyboard, leading the choir. That was the time the Lord said, Raja, you step out to be the missionary. I said, Lord, there is nothing else than to do your job. There is no regret in serving God. God is no man's debtor. We praise God to that. Keeping this as the base for another half an hour, I will just go into today's topic. This is about the praying for missions. Or another way, what I want to, what to pray for the missionaries. And if you take the Bible, as I am talking about different passages, if you take the scripture, Mark chapter 16, and also the last passage of Matthew, the chapter that we could see that, go into the world and preach the good news to every creature, and who are believes, baptize them and save them. And there is another uh, trans, another version that is in Matthew say making disciples so going preaching baptizing these are all the activities but ultimately to see that bringing people to the relationship with God so that they will be the people who will be the disciples of Jesus Christ there was occasion when Jesus was in Caesarea Philippi he was asking the question what do the people talk about me? They were able to give a lot of answers, but Jesus pinpointed to the disciples and, what do you say to me, about me? Everyone kept silent. Only Peter was able to tell that you are the Christ, you are the living God. And then on the basis of his confession, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of the hell will not prevail. So on the basis of the confession, he builds his church. But at the same time, when God builds his church, always there is a conflict because it is a between the kingdom of God and between the enemy of God. So when there is a, always a tussle, God is calling the body of Christ to cry unto him. That's what we are going to see this evening time. And we are all blessed by many churches. We are all coming from different backgrounds. In the early church, and also later after the Reformation, I was telling on the other day, when the foreign missions, or when people came to the Lord after the Reformation time, every church had three different councils. One was the church council, which was basically engaged in the ministry of the local church, like how we have Sunday school, women's meeting, youth meeting, all the things, and also the maintenance of the church. Then they had the home council, sending people to the nearby area so that they can share the gospel and have uh, small churches to be planted. Otherwise, we can say that a main church or the mother church planting the mother church or sister concern or branch churches. Then thirdly, they had the field council that is sending people across the culture or to other countries. So all the churches had these three councils, church council, home council, Field council. Okay, then what about the budget of the church? They spend 20% only for the church maintenance and the ministry. And then 30% to send their church members to the nearby place to conduct Sunday school, then to see that that is becoming a worship group, and then to construct a church for which they spend almost 30% of their income. Then the 50% of their income was spent sending missionaries. And that's the reason if you go to many of the countries, you could see huge property, schools, hospitals, how all it happened. Because someone loved someone, because they sacrificed for the sake of the gospel of Christ, we could see wonderful things happening. We are talking about the scripture, we are talking about the Bible. I think we have to go back to the basics. I think our church should rethink about the church history, and because of someone committed, they are able to release the children for the work of the Lord. That's the reason missionaries are able to go. There was a time Hudson Taylor prayed to the Lord, Lord, you give me 24 skilled and willful workers. When he went to England, the Lord provided. Because the church was able to send, the parents are able to dedicate when the Lord had called. This evening, I want to see five areas why we have to pray for God's people. Number one, we have to pray for the wisdom and the word of God. 
If we turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 4, and there we see when the persecution started to break in the early church, when the disciples started to move forward, when a lot of people started to put their trust in Lord Jesus Christ, then we see it, we, we see in chapter 4, verse 28 onward, to do whatever you have had in 29, the Lord, they asked the Lord, look at their threat and grant your servants the boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hands to heal. Okay, we'll go to the next later. Verse 29, seeking for God's wisdom and right word in the time of difficulties to utter to the people. As I told you earlier, when a missionary, there are two ways to understand the missionary perspectives. Normally we think that one thing to send people outside from our place, that's one way to look into that. The other side, understanding our calling, being a witness in the place where the Lord has placed already. Okay, when you are talking about sending missionaries across the culture or across the country, when they go to the place after their training, in our mission we give nine months of training, at the end we give them the training how to learn the new languages. So when they go to the new place, they are like a foreigners. Getting the right shelter is a big challenge. And there are places, no water or proper electricity. And they cannot communicate with anyone. So when a person goes, they listen to new languages. It takes almost one and a half to two years for our people to learn the culture, or understand the language and to speak the language of the people. In our mission, we made it very strict. Unless you learn the language of the people, the heart language, you should not communicate the gospel to the people because people love to listen in their heart language. Then the culture, understanding the culture, making our gospel so relevant to the people, it also matters a lot. And now when they communicate the gospel, always as I said, big challenge which comes, where God's servants need boldness to share the gospel, confront the evil structures, as well as in that particular situation, they need the wisdom from the Lord. Friends, some of our missionaries, after translating the Bible for almost six years, they came to know that in that particular language, it has got only two tens, not three tens. And I was reading the life of Don Richardson, who was a missionary who served in Papua New Guinea. Probably, if you go into the Google, if you put Peace Child, and that particular tribe, they had. 19 different tents. So, who are the missionaries? Human beings. When they go to the new place, pray that God will give them the boldness. Now in the present scenario, it is always a big challenge. Recently we sent 17 of our missionaries to different places. The first question was asked by the anti-Christian elements in our country. What is the purpose of your coming? What is your identity? They're all young people. Friends in the midst of that, they all know that I am in the right place. The Lord has put me over here and they need prayer. Missionary work is a teamwork. Some are called to go directly. Some are called to be remain here. You are here because of God's calling, not because of your job. Secondly, Pray for the wonders. Acts chapter 4, the following verse, it says, when they are going through the threat and everything, verse 30, it says that, by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Secondly, let's pray for the wonders. In some of the places, when you go and proclaim Christ through a word and deed, people may not understand. Why do you talk about those remote areas? Even among the educated groups, when we see the wonders and the signs, we are ready to follow it. If that is over here, how much it can be? Friends, God has given the spiritual gifts to everyone. When we understand that this is the calling from the Lord, God gives us the spiritual gifts. Only thing is to identify our gifts. 
there are times wherever I have gone, only one thing I could hear from many of the other friends of faith, Christians only can pray for others. You ask anyone to pray for others, they have their own struggles. But you take the Christians, they can pray for others. You are walking among a tribe I was mentioning over there, a Voxos. We went for the evangelism and tax distribution for the first time into the Himalayan regions. And I went to the very remotest place after getting down from the bus and I was talking to our missionaries. Okay, here I see a man with a different desire. Why don't you go and talk about Christ? So we talked generally for 20 minutes. First I got some water to drink. It was so bad. But still to identify with the people, that's the way we do it. Then I asked him about Jesus Christ. This man ran to the home and I was wondering really what is going to come. I told my missionaries, let us ready to run. They are all lean people. They can run with my, it's very difficult. I said, I do not know what is going to come from there, whether they are going to come with a knife or something else. This man came with the old radio and lifted and said, this radio was talking about Jesus Christ. I asked him, what do you think about Jesus Christ? In Hindi he said, that means he's a good God. Then I asked him, have you ever seen Christians? No, if you want to see Christians, what do you want to do? He said, if I see the Christians, I want to hug them. I said, even we won't hug Christians. Then this man said, I asked him, why do you want to hug them? They always pray for others. In the radio, they used to pray for the people engaged in the agriculture, people who are traveling, people who are doing a lot of government job. They are good people. Then finally, I revealed that we are all Christians. Our missionaries did the follow up Within 11 months, we had the joy of baptizing three key leaders of that village. We praise God that we have worship groups among them. What I want to share over here, friends, you all can pray. When you see, always I say, have the principle of Joseph. When he saw the sad face, he took the initiative, went to them in Genesis chapter 40, we see. He took the initiative, went, just listened. Probably in this context, you can just say, I can pray for you. Probably you cannot pray in the public place. Why don't you use the God-given skills? You can give a lot of excuses. See, that is a, one of the traps. We have a list of excuses not to engage in the work of the Lord. God will not entertain any excuses in the kingdom of God. Friends, because we are here, because of the condition and the situations, we may say so many things, but still, in silence, God can do wonderful things. A couple of years back, in a particular village, in the early morning, one man dead, the wife screamed, we have got two evangelists. And as you are talking about, when you stretch the hands, how the Lord can do it, and this is the village we found very difficult to take the gospel of Christ. So, um, Billy, two of our evangelists, they are not highly educated, took the dead body to their home and said, Lord, they use this passage. Lord, in your name, you said, wonders can be performed. We believe that you are a living God. Lord, we want to see a great opening in this place. Lord, you do something. As they are praying, after 10 minutes, Amru, this man, opened his eyes. After half an hour, he asked for water. After one hour, he got up and walked. After two days, the Sunday came with the family. He came to worship the Lord. We have a worship center in their village. It's two years back it happened. Ordinary people, God can use. If God can use those people, how much he can use on me? Friends, always do you carry with the excuses that I cannot engage in the work of the Lord? No. God will not entertain the quitters in the kingdom of God. Always we may be deceived. But when you have the desire, Lord, you open the doors. Even God can use the shut doors in that context. First we saw that there is a wisdom and word of God. Secondly, for the wonders... And thirdly, let us pray for the worshippers. Chapter 14, Acts of Apostles, chapter 14. And this is one of the very interesting 
passage, verse 21 till the end, we could see how the mission work is engaged. They went and engaged, shared the gospel, evangelized the people, and the local church was formed, and they were able to entrust to the faithful people, edify the people in God's word, and they moved from one place to another. When you go to those places, when people come into the saving knowledge of Christ, always gospel attacks the worldview and also the thought pattern, the value systems. I hope Pastor Gerald can do a good study what I am talking about. See, if our world is not disturbed, if there is no shift in our thought pattern, if there is no change in our value systems, we cannot, be the, we cannot have the gospel lifestyle. Why many times the Christians are not able to be transformed? They are all good Christians coming and going, but you cannot get anything out of them. Why? The world we did not change. Still having the same understanding, it is yet to get into the perspective of God's kingdom which should change our thinking and our values unless it is not happening. So when a person comes to the realization that this is my way of operation, friends, always they go through the challenges. Some of the challenges what we face in India, when they come to the Lord, girls and boys, they find it very difficult to get their spouses. Why? They strongly believe that I cannot get married with a person of the other faiths because the Bible is not encouraging that. Whether you believe or not, whether you practice or not, in the name of the interfaith and other things, but ordinary people, they literally believe what is written in the scripture. There was a man by name Muthu in Himachal, that is in a very remotest valley, he came to the Lord during the market season a missionary shared the gospel. And that man was a Christian for more than 40 years. Few years back, he completed his race, went to be the Lord. Till the last breath, he was a bachelor. Do you know the reason? People are not interested to give a girl to this man who comes from a very remote village. And he was also not interested to get married with a non-Christian. He paid a price. Ordinary man coming from the remotest places. First generation, when the marriage comes, they take a very firm stand. The Lord honors it. There are places in our context, people cannot go and take water even from the local places. And some places, when they stand for the values, the Christian, our virtues, when you compromise, you will not any have any conflict. When you stand for your conviction, always you will face the challenges. We work in the western part of India, near to Pakistan, a place called Rajasthan. Pastor Emmanuel must be knowing that place. We work among a group called Boxos. Sorry, uh, Hadothi. A person came to the Lord. He wanted to construct a house. Now, as a couple, they decided to construct. So, they went to the nearby electricity board, giving an application to get the connection for the new house. In that area, normally people won't go to the electricity office to give an application. First time, a man in that area asking for the application. Some of you filled it, gave the money, and then the officer asked, in this jurisdiction, nobody asks for the application. You are the first man to ask. After much struggle, they found the application and gave to this man. Why are you asking for this? He said, sir, normally you get the money from all the people. You give the permission to take the electricity directly from the main line. That's the way it happens in some of the places in India. He said, now I am a Christian. We believe a God who is in us. I cannot do what the scripture is not pleasing. We will do what the Lord is giving us. 
will honor the law and the order for our country. And this man stood for that. The persecution started. Our missionary was chased out of the village. Praise God in both the places now we have the worship. Why I am talking about when people come to the Lord and stand for their conviction, always a challenge. Pray more for the worshippers because they are coming from the clutches of the enemy of the Lord and when they come to the transformed lives, always they face challenges. As much as you pray for the missionaries, pray for the new brand believers. Thirdly, let us also pray for the welfare of the missionaries. Second Corinthians, I am not going into those details. There you see what are the atrocities and the challenges Paul faced in his life. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 22 onward. Then we see Paul was able to affirm that the grace of God can be sufficient in my life. And always when you make a commitment, there is a price to pay for that. Without paying a price, we cannot please God. Sometimes when you go through this journey, the question comes, is it a sacrifice that we make for the sake of the gospel or an investment that we make in the kingdom of God? Are you listening to me? Paying the price for the sake of our faith, is it an investment in God's kingdom or a sacrifice? When you look into the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrifice, what we talk about, is nothing. It's an investment that we do in the work of the Lord. All the time, the missionaries, they also go through the challenges. Today I got a mail from one of our colleagues. He's going to be retired within another six years. He has got three children. Last year I completed the New Testament in the central part of India. He said, I was not able to give much time to our children. Could you please allow us to be transferred where our children at least now can be in a good place? I said, I come from a missionary family. I had my early days of my schooling under the tree. When there was a rain, I was getting the holiday. Our teacher used to say, if there is a cloud in your village, don't come there. I learned, me, learned my ABCD alphabets when I was 10 years old. This is what my background. My parents are now still serving God. Sometimes our children find it difficult to be detached from the family. They have to travel almost two days. And if you talk to your pastor general, sometimes till the furlough they cannot see earlier days. Now at least good communication systems. The children, their sacrifice more than the parents. The children are the one who makes more commitment than the parents. Many times we neglect our children. When our missionaries go to the remotest place, to the highly elevated areas, some of our missionaries are having abortion. They are not able to have a proper pregnancy because they went to a very remote areas where there was no proper medical facilities and where we had to release our missionaries to come to the place where they can get enough medical facilities. There are times when they are threatened by the antisocial elements, sleepless nights, always a kind of inner struggle. We need to pray for them. I request you, you talk to your pastor, connect with at least one missionary of any organization. If you want, I can give the contact number of our missionaries at least once in a month or once in two months. You call them. We know how to talk to our children every minute. The missionaries are like your children, your brothers and sisters. You have gone to the remote places. Send one word. That will make a great miracle. Do something. Give your time. Visit sometimes to our mission fields or some place. Send the email. Get those friends' number. If you want, we'll be happy to give. This is the way I am not promoting our mission. I'm encouraging you to invest in the kingdom of God. Friends, we can pray, we can contribute. Something else. Something else we can do for the work of the Lord. Finally, 
let us also pray for the workers. Matthew chapter 9, it's a well-known passage. It talks about, the Bible is saying that, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the house field. Friends, the open doors are there. Now also, every place we could see, every month I get at least two or three emails asking us to open the new mission field. At this juncture, we need at least 60 missionaries. In the beginning of April, I was in Kenya attending a meeting, a consultation, where many of the bishops in Africa, they said, why don't you come and help us? The call is everywhere. Everywhere the people wanted to have someone to come and give God's word. We need the laborers. One of the missionaries who came to India, her name is Amy Carmichael, when she landed in India, she said, Lord, I thank you for enabling me to fulfill the commitment of my parents. What happened? Amy Carmichael's mother, when she was small, she prayed to the Lord, Lord, I am dedicating this child for the missionary cause. This evening, the Lord is reminding the church to release your people for the work of the Lord. Dear parents, you are having a lot of ambitions about the future of your children. Is there any place for God's kingdom in your dreams for your children? Do you have something for the people who never heard the gospel in your futuristic planning for your children? Is there anyone having the desire that I will send my child for the work of the Lord? Let me remind these two words. In serving God, there is no regret. God is no man's debtor. If we honor God, the Lord will honor. Sometimes we are very much concerned about our grandchildren, the next generations. Why don't you motivate our children to serve God? When you do that, the Lord will be placed. So let me conclude here. Five things we studied. Pray for the wisdom and the word of God. Pray for the wonders. Pray for the worshippers, the first generation friends. Pray for the welfare of God's people who are spread out in different places. Some people ask me, what is the difference between the pastoral ministry and the missionary service? I just tell them, both are interlinked. If you are a missionary, when you share the gospel, people will come, you have to become a pastor. You have to be a missionary pastor. The other side, a pastor also should be a missionary. He should be a pastor missionary. Because bringing people, building them, both should happen simultaneously. But some places, in the pastoral ministry, you will have a ready-made congregation where we can educate and edify people. But in the missionary work, where there is no fellowship, we have to bring the fellowship where the people may be able to worship the living God. Let me conclude. There was a missionary in our country, went to serve the Lord in the very remotest place. They are blessed with five children. One of the children was having fever every evening, just four years old, taken to the nearest, the best hospital in Asia, we say, the Christian Medical College, CMC Velo. After four months, the doctors diagnosed that their little boy is down with polio, and they said some part of the body may be affected, so pastor, you take this child and go back. They gave a lot of medicines, only for the fever. Every day, four to eight, severe fever, nothing worked out. After some time, this little boy lost his left hand. The left hand became one third of the right hand. He lost the strength and also size. With the help of others, he was able to rise. Otherwise, it was just oscillating. The missionary went to the village, talked about the living God. The village head came and said, how can you talk about a living God when your son is having a dead hand? Sir, don't go to any villages and talk about Jesus because we know your son, how beautifully he was running around. He's a guy, now lost everything. Don't talk about this cry, God. That was the time for missionaries 
There are a lot of loneliness. That's one of the challenges they go through. Only God's word is their companion. They went through God's word. The Lord gave the promise to remain back over there. The top leaders of the organization said, Now you cannot do anything in the village. Why do you to come to the same hospital? We will appoint you as a chaplain. Your son also can get good treatment. Wonderful idea. But when this offer came, this couple said, No, we will not go. Because God sent us with a purpose to this place. We have the inner peace that God has taken care of because he has given us the promise. It's a kind of a foolish, emotional response. But at the same time, this couple were able to pass on this information to some of the churches to pray regularly in the church prayer, in the missionary prayer and prayer. So only a few people have been praying. See, one of the greatest things what you can do when you pray for God's people, especially in the mission field, through your prayer, God can do your miracle over there. After a few days, this boy was sleeping. The fine morning, he had a vision of Christ coming, Jesus coming and touching the hand. Call the dad. Papa, Jesus came, touched my hand. The missionary rushed and saw this bow. He was able to raise the hand after eight months. He said, why don't you get up and raise your hands? He was able to rise after eight months. In the midnight, it was one third. When Jesus touched the hand, it became normal like the other hand. There was no difference between the right hand and the left hand. Yes. Prayer can make a difference. Yes. The little boy ran to the village, told the Jesus the living God. As a result, many people started to put their faith. The same boy joined with our mission called Indian Evangelical Mission. The same boy is talking to you this evening. It happened when I was four years old, in 1972. My father is 88 years old. Still he is serving God at this age for the past 54 years among the hill tribes in our country. 12 years back, my mother completed a race. She was buried in the same hills. Still, till the last breath, they wanted to serve God. It is not what you don't have, what you do with what you have in our hands.